All right, boring video incoming. So we're gonna do a little discussion about our uh, field, our pasture out here, and what it is we plan on. This is basically for documenting for us more than anything, because we wanna be able to look back, do one of these each year, and be able to tell you know what kind of progress we're making because it's one thing you know to visually look at it but over time you get desensitized to change so if you have video documentation that you can compare to it's the most helpful i think in my opinion anyway uh so on the field that we're at right now we're getting ready to get pigs right so we wanted to kind of take a look at at where we're at currently and then how much the pigs can actually help us so i'm gonna reverse this camera around real quick we're gonna take a look at the mowed area, the area that I haven't mowed yet, and um, then we'll be able to tell once the, once we get some livestock on here and and get some better farming practices. We're basically calling this year one because we were we were here last year, but we didn't do anything with the field. In fact, my mower was broken in in the fall, and it didn't get repaired until after the snow was already on the ground. So we're just now even mowing it for the first time. So let's take a look at it. All righty, so. Here is what the field basically looks like where it's mowed. You can see this area right here is a little greener. This is a depression where the creek kind of overflows, so this does get some moisture right in here. And then up over there, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more here even. Uh, over there where those uh, immature pines are is a lot wetter. So you'll see a little bit more grass over there. But our biggest issue is where I haven't mowed, you can see the knapweed. I think it's spotted knapweed out here in this part of the country. Um, we've got, you know, some areas, it's just blotchy, right? You got these like dense tufts of grass that are coming up and then a lot of um, just sparse uh, soil you can see in between. So you see quite a bit more of it. And this is actually decent soil in here. This is the area that gets more wet. And you can see these little mounds here. So we have noticed an increase in worm activity since we've been here in the garden area. So we're hoping that um, over time we can get the same progress in the field. So this area is actually some of the better looking areas of the field. If we pop out here where I just mowed some yesterday and then where it hasn't been mowed since before we moved in. But again, you see, you know, you're just seeing a lot of, of dirt. It's not terrible. I mean, the soil here is actually quite good for, you know, basically a neglected field. It's not bad at all. Um, but the grasses need, we need some disturbance on here to get these grasses popping up. So the pigs are supposed to do a really good job of getting rid of this knapweed. At least that's the story. So when we pick up our pigs, um, initially we won't be able to get them on here because I've got a lot to do in terms of getting basically the quadrant set up for the field. So I want to be able to have rotational grazing in here. Eventually rotationally graze in the woods as well because pigs do wonders for wood rehabilitation and uh, knocking down invasive species and bringing up beneficial species both on the grass and in the woods. So that is the longer term plan. But as you can see, this knapweed is really aggressive. And we've got some nice tall grasses again that are trying to come through here. This is a, a kind of a wetter area too. This is kind of a lower spot. Um, so hopefully, I don't even know how many years it's been since this has been, um, been mowed even. <laughs> I can't remember. It doesn't look like, it looks like there's been at least a couple seasons of this grass falling down on itself. And we have a lot of little mini pines in here that need to be pulled. I think over, like that area over there, a little more mature pines. Um, I think we're going to, we maybe we'll leave those because we want to have like a trail behind there next to the creek. But a lot of these in here need to go. Um, these pines can be a little toxic to some livestock so I don't really want them in here proliferating over a long period of time so I'll cut here real quick and I'm gonna zoom over to this section so you guys don't have to hang on here while I walk 
Okay, so now where I'm walking, I don't know if you can catch it on camera, but uh, this is water. So basically, this is where the creek overflows. Here's a good shot right here. Bam. So you can see standing water here. So this is where the creek overflows into the corner of this field. And what I, what I would like to do, you can see how green it is right there. I don't know how far I can go out here without sinking my boots into the mud. But um, I'm thinking this corner, this is all aspen, I believe. But I think in that corner is where we're going to do like a pretty large pond because the creek is for years has just been kind of saturating this whole area. So I think if I can get the creek fixed up a little bit so it's not overflowing and we get it a nice pond down here, we can really grow some beneficials there and have a nice watering source for wild animals. And if we if we get it big enough and it stays there year round, maybe be able to do some irrigation um not the best spot for irrigation i really want to do a pond closer to the house to irrigate because we're downhill right here so i could use gravity but uh, i do want to hold the moisture on the property a little bit better rather than just letting it kind of flop everywhere so you can see a lot of really fresh grasses coming up here through the uh, collapsed grass from last year so this area over here will get like six feet tall it gets really, you can't even see into the woods once this back corner hits, I don't know, August. It really gets high in here. So if I could get most of the field to look like this, I would be ecstatic. Because this is what you want right here. This is really nice stuff. And obviously with this getting a pretty constant source of water, especially it's, you know, the soil's so saturated that even when it gets dry here, this is holding its own in the driest months because it has so much moisture in the soil. So this is kind of what we're hoping to get uh, through some proper remediation. You don't see any knapweed in here, right? The grass is so strong that it's basically blocking out the knapweed entirely. And as soon as you start getting a little drier, you start seeing the knapweed pop through. So that is the goal, is to get it looking all like it was over there, you know, years into the future. You really gotta take these properties and you're not gonna do everything in one, two, or even three years. It's gotta be a longer term vision. This is not, uh, you know, something where, you know, permaculture concepts in general or you know, whatever concept you want to call it. I know there's lots of different regenerative farming. Those processes take a long time. Now we can significantly speed them up with human input, right? To put the proper infrastructure in place, the proper animals in place and uh, using proper uh, practices. But, um, you know, it still takes time. You know, we, we can't, you can't be in kind of an ADD frame of mind when it comes to regenerative, any kind of regenerative practices here so this is just give one good pano of the whole field here we did run chickens on this section up here where i've mowed not yet but i mean last year we ran chickens in this area up by the garden we ran them that way so that was that was good that's something else we're doing besides just the pigs is we're getting the uh i move my chickens twice a day the the pastured poultry, the broilers. So we move them twice a day. And, um, you know, not a ton of knapweed coming up. I know I've already mowed this, but not a whole lot of baby knapweed coming up here. We still got a lot of sandy spots that uh, need to be rectified and filled in. So, you know, we're, we'll keep running chickens. I don't know if we'll run them this far in anymore, probably a little bit further out here. But um, the tractor did tear this up a little bit too when I was uh, cutting the grass. But yeah, this is where we ran the chickens. So going, for, uh, going forward in the future, this will probably end up being more rotational cropping. All right, so that's a quick look at the field and where it stands right now. Um, a lot of these, these things just take time. You know, we got to get out here first and foremost. I got to mow as much as I can. I obviously cannot mow where the ground is so wet. Um, so that'll be probably wait until 
August when it dries out quite a bit and see what kind of management I want to do over there. Um, probably just some kind of pond development in my, in my opinion. That's probably the only real option other than just letting it be. If we want to do something and, and hold that moisture, it's going to be developing the pond. So this area over here behind me, um, we're thinking that's where we'll maybe we'll put a couple cabins or something like that, or an RV spot or two is up over in this section. And, um, you know, right now it looks pretty good, but when we have the dry, mo uh, dry months in the summer, I don't currently have the well output or an alternative irrigation system, you know, to keep moisture on these higher areas over here where the water doesn't naturally stay. So there's a lot to kind of think about and, and, and do here. Hopefully, um, we're going to come up with some kind of solution for that because right now with the current well output, I mean, I would just be moving like a couple sprinklers nonstop and then it would just be running the well basically in perpetuity trying to keep that hydrated when it's 90 degrees and we haven't had rain in 45 days, which does happen here second half of June going through basically all of August and maybe into September. We get maybe two decent rains in, in those two and a half, three month spans. So uh, that would be the probably the biggest challenge is, is bringing hydration to these other areas. So that's a look at the field and uh, not the most exciting conversation, but um, you know, this, this is where, you know, you really add value to the land because this is a very complex thing to do to elevate, you know, it's, it's time consuming and there's, there's a lot of thought that needs to go into it because you can't totally mess it up by like, you know, abusing it by keeping the pigs on there too long or keeping the cows on there too long but also getting the proper level of, of, you know, manure and nutrients into the ground without bringing in artificial fertilizers. So it's really about giving the fuel to the worms because you want the worms to be as uh, happy and successful because that's what's putting all that nutrients back into the soil. If you can get tons of, of good micro biome life under the soil and tons of worms, you're going to be in really good shape. So that's what we're aiming for here. And uh, we're also going to do another vlog hopefully today as well. So um, that's it for the pasture video.